Um, hopefully this presentation I'm going to do uh, now is going to be a bit different from most of the things you've seen earlier today. Um, you've seen some technical things earlier today, you've seen some, uh, a lot of information on the screen. What I'm going to try and do is go through, now most people when they say this in their presentations at the end of the day are usually joking and I can tell you I'm definitely not joking, it is absolutely true. I have got 87 slides but I'm going to go through them extremely quickly because it's not relevant that you look at each one for any really, really long period of time. Lots and lots of information. Now, can I just have a show of hands? Anyone seen the security press in the last week? Any security story at all, whether it's on BBC News website or the local newspaper? Yeah, pretty much everyone. You see, there's, there's now you know, a lot more stories in, in, in the usual press that we never used to get, which are security-related stories. There's so much going on out there now that it's become a norm. And really what I'm going to do is, because all these things happen, and you probably in your own businesses sat there perhaps think about, oh, right, okay, I've seen this, so how does this impact on me? What I'm going to try and do is throw lots and lots of stories at you and try and put some context on some of them and on others just to tell you that you don't need to worry about them. Um, and I'm going to round it all up uh, and I'm going to round it all up by providing hopefully some sort of context on how you can view these things. So let's get going. So the agenda I've got is lots and lots of news reports. I'm going to go through them, try and provide some context as I'm going along and some relevance and try and look through that if, 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 if very, very quickly and the importance of things like asset registers, threat modelling, risk registers and sorts of actions that you may be able to take. So. The, the, the 10 days in February, we're, we're, the company I work for is a consultancy and we're analysts, we're security analysts. We analyse what's going on in the news, we analyse what's going on in the industry, we analyse a, a whole bunch of stuff. Plus, on top of that, we work with our clients, we are consultants, we provide consultancy. So these are 10 days in February. Then after I've done these 10 days in February, and I, these are a snippet, we get lots and lots of news and I've saved a, a, a few a few examples, as I said, in 10 days in February. After that, most of what I'm going to present, news items that I've pulled out of the news in the last 10 days. And I think, when I say last 10 days, I don't mean yesterday going back. I think it's probably Saturday going back 10 days from there onwards. So what's been in the news that's of interest, that impacts security, that could impact your businesses? Um, what are the issues? This is an important one for me. Um, this is about the meat scare, the, the, you know, the horse meat. Why is horse meat so important to security? Well, the reason why horse meat is so important to security is because the issue isn't the fact that it's horse meat. The issue is the supply chain. So when you look at news, it's quite important to understand what is it in that news item that is of real importance that could impact your business uh, and, and what you're doing. So the new, the new story there was the fact that the supply chain had been interfered with and there wasn't the integrity in the supply chain. So that's an example of how important the integrity is uh, within this. But it's also a good example of what's to come in terms of news stories and trying to identify what's relevant and what's not. If Federal Reserve confirms its system was breached, well, if the Federal Reserve can get hacked, what chance have we got? Yep. And well, you need to take that into... Than the Reserve. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, so the thing is, if, especially if you think in some respects the Federal Reserve has got security staff, in many small businesses they don't have lots of security staff and it is quite difficult sometimes to um, actually cope with all the different security vulnerabilities you may need to cope with that Maria was perhaps looking at earlier on. Also in terms of this thing here, that's quite important, and this news story, and that's why I say it's important to look at news stories and what's important to them, is this, was, this came about because of hacktivism, because they'd said something that's relevant that the, uh, the anonymous didn't like. Next one, Japan. Japan Foreign Ministry says PC leaks documents to external server. The Minister said that it's investigating, but none of the leaked documents contain classified information. Now, bear that in mind. I'm going to go through a couple more of these, and I'll come back to that one. Uh, broke Estonian suspect leads guilty, pleads guilty to DNS changer, click fraud scam, uh, cyber crooks netted 14 million after infecting 4 million machines. An Estonian man pleads guilty to involved, involvement in the DNS changer, click fraud scam, Trojan infected 4 million computers worldwide. It's a lot of machines. I'll come back to that later as well. Microsoft to plug 57 security holes next week. If you've got, again, 
devices, lots of different things. I know earlier on we talked about embedded devices and Paul asked a question earlier on about the fact that embedded devices don't have patches. Well, a lot of machines do and there are always often holes that are being found on a continuous basis. It always goes on. What you need to look at is what have you got? If you are a big Microsoft user, obviously that's important. If you're a Mac user, obviously that's not important to you, but I'll come on to Mac in a few minutes. Um, Crook steal security firm's crypto key. Use it to sign malware. That's a very important one. Your, 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 the, the keys that you've got that you use for everything that, that, that you're operating your business on, how secure are they? Because obviously this firms were not secure, so people were able to steal them and use them to sign uh, malware instead of, uh, which, which made people think that the Malware that they were using actually did actually belong as real applications to the uh, security firm. Um, U.S. set to be target of massive cyber espionage campaign. That's nothing new, but what are the chances that it might happen to your businesses? It depends entirely on what's happening out there and what your organisation, the field it's in, what work it does, what it's working on, the technology it's developing. Uh, it depends on a whole bunch of factors as to whether or not you're the flavour of the month for any uh, attacks, perhaps or perhaps not. And it, it does vary on many, many factors. Adobe, more patches. Um, I'd, I've put this one in again for last month, this comes up, Adobe patches come up again and again and again and again and again. I actually took out three of these ones for, for March's one. Um, right, this lady here, um, romance turns in cyber attacks, stalks and harassment. Now I've got a couple of these, these are quite important. I quit cyber dating over weirdos, uh, Rose Kelly, and this one here, Virginia woman sues ex-boyfriend for cyber harassment. Now, all those three, it's people who were in, working for someone. What happened was, and why I put these in, it illustrates how sometimes your employees, what they do outside of work actually impacts what happens inside of work. And with this lady here and her 16-year-old daughter, with, with this, what happened to her was someone that she went out with, when she broke up with them, they then posted her house number, her telephone number, her emails, uh, videos, sexual videos of her ex-partner and her on the internet and said that she was a prostitute and to give her a call for a good time. She then got uh, loads and loads and loads of calls, she got harassed, she got lots uh, of, of, of grief. In the end she was actually sacked from, by, her, by her employer because of all this bad, bad publicity. Now if you look at it uh, uh, all I'm really trying to illustrate is you need to think about some of the things that happen within your organisations. Um, we've come across instances which aren't in last month's or this month's, and that's why I've included these in so I could remember to bring it in, whereby sometimes what people do outside of work, yes it is private, it's completely private, but unfortunately what happens is if they do something that they're embarrassed by and someone finds out, it's then perhaps used for blackmail or other purposes. And I say other purposes, it could be used for bribery, it could be used for a whole range of things, and bribery in terms of getting into your systems, or blackmail to get into your systems as well. And this has been seen a little bit more often, that's the reason why these slides are in there. Uh, cyber criminals target mobile users, social media, there's some more of these for this month, uh, and they're beginning to target mobile users more and more. Um, Bush family hack, um, this is Bush's uh, email account that was, be that was hacked last month. Uh, former S N N NFL cheerleader answers cyber bullies on Facebook. This lady was being harassed by uh, lots of cyber bullies and she did try to respond and they just made it worse and you're getting a lot more, uh, many more instances of this, more and more that are coming into the press. Again, it, it, there, there's, there's great possibility whether it's at work or at home, it could get into the work, and we've seen this a bit more as well. Cyber criminals targeting social networking sites to steal money. 
and Maria alluded to this earlier on in terms of pen testing. Um, yep, it, they are beginning to look at, at social networking to try and find out what you do use, what you don't use, um, anything that you may or may not have an interest in, uh, because again, the skills that Maria was talking about in terms of pen testing, those same skills are used to pen test an individual, and it may be called social networking perhaps, but the f fact is that they use that to try and attack you perhaps as an individual, maybe even perhaps to get to your organisation. Um, this one here, um, it's, it, this is the only one I've included which is not a news item uh, from a news website, it's from a company website, Radware. Uh, this company's uh, put together um, a, a, a tool which basically profiles anyone that is on a social networking site and it can put together a, a loads of information that can work out uh, who you're likely to vote in the next election, who you voted for, uh, wh what your views are on a whole bunch of topics depending on the amount of information they collect. And they're, f they're finding that they're quite accurate, they can get lots and lots of information from social networking sites. So th th they're beginning to collect that sort of information now and they're selling those systems to governments to be able to profile all of us. Um, a Japan man arrested in bizarre hacking case involving cyber riddles. Uh, this guy <laughs> decided um, he was going to... Uh, he had a whole bunch of riddles all over, over a long period of time, where he led the police absolutely everywhere uh, with lots and lots of clues. It was a bit, a bit like it was out of the movies. It was, it's so hilarious. It's a story well worth reading. It's quite complex, but again, these guys are getting on, on, onto the internet and some of these people, are, the fact that they are slightly crazy and they've got some technical expertise does get you worried about what their motives are, whereas if you go to the police with someone where you've had something stolen, it's quite straightforward what the motive is and why they've done it and it's, it's fairly, fairly easy, whereas people like this, if you get an attack from someone like this person, it's fairly difficult to understand uh, where they're getting to. Uh, Twitter hit by sophisticated cyber attacks. Um, so was Microsoft, but um, I think I might have it here. Sophisticated cyber attack hits energy department. Android malware, uh, yep, again, more, more vulnerabilities. Right, okay, that was, that was in, in, in February. Now, what I missed out, I hadn't realised I'd pulled some of those out. In, in the month of February, we had Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter, the Federal Reserve, and a whole bunch of other organisations, several of those said that they, were, they had an attack which was very sophisticated and there was no evidence that data had been stolen. Now that I find very, very surprising. It was that sophisticated that they got away with nothing. Um, how can that be? I, I just find it strange. Anyway, so the last 10 days. So lots been going on. And if you look at it, we're only in the third month of this year that there have been all these attacks going on. And if you're reading these and you're wondering how they affect you, I, I will come, come to that later on about how to think about this in a bit more detail. So what else have we had? We've had half the firms that have a be, uh, bring your own device policy, they've suffered a security breach. That's a study by Dell. Um, Governments should investigate uh, alternatives to email protection to protect them from security threats. Yeah, that's, that's a fairly good article um, because emails are not secure and, and the session we had earlier on from Paul, Paul was talking about identity because in email you cannot prove identity. That is a difficulty and, and there needs to be an alternative to that. Um, one click application installation may not be enough to uh, amount to personal data processing consent. Uh, anyone here know about the EU data protection regulation and how it impacts perhaps their organisation? Right, this is uh, an article which looks at that because that we are beginning to get more and more sophistication and more, I guess, uh, clarification on how um, our organisation is going to be impacted by um, the various strands within the new data protection regulation that will come into force at some point or another and this focuses in terms of applications that we download uh, on our mobile devices. Uh, there, there is a lot there uh, that, that, that will come out more as months come on and, and before that becomes law. 
US regulator vows to take enforcement action over deception, uh, sorry, deceptive social media ads. Lots of social media ads that they're finding are quite deceptive and it, they, it's got so bad that the regulator's actually going to take action. So far they've been ignoring it, it's made it news because it's got that bad. Um, South Korea hacks, uh, sorry, says hacking not from uh, Chinese address. This is in the last few days uh, between North and South Korea. It's not possible to tell, to tell by IP addresses necessarily where an attack has come from and where it's necessarily aimed at because it could be bounced off several places. And it's still not clear right now necessarily. Um, decade old espionage malware found targeting government uh, computers. This one, I think, yes. Uh, yeah, it's a team viewer one. Um, I th it, it, it. Can I just check? Does anyone know what team viewer is? Yeah, there's a couple of people. Okay, it's basically a device which uh, an, an application that you can use for support purposes, where you can install it on your machine so someone can give you remote. Uh, support and that's what this is about so basically what's happened is somebody's copied that and they've taken that and given it to people as if it was real application but now they're using it to hack into their machines so it's it's, it's a bit of malware there uh, police arrest London man in connection with Telon Bank Trojan yep more more things uh, the police crime unit have just found this person um, UK bloke collared at home by bank raid uh, Trojan probe cops um, <laughs> I do like the register, it's, it's a really good site, they often have some things uh, as breaking news first before any other site, but they are, sometimes the headlines are equivalent to the sun, um, and they're always very, very amusing, <laughs> but, but there's lots again going on, and, 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 and the reason why I put these in is sometimes it's useful to look at when you look at these stories, and you think about what you're reading, you think, right, okay, so what's going on? It's to look at how give you a couple of stories sorry earlier on we talked uh, you saw uh, the Kaspersky presentation David talking about uh, some of the viruses that we had last year uh, the, the Red October Martha talked about now Martha did, did, did make it quite clear we don't have to worry about those things because the target really and truly has so far been governments and government related organizations and big organizations and not small ones um, however where you need to be thinking in terms of thinking forward and looking at the impact of your own organisations is possibly the malware industry out there whereby sometimes when a piece of malware comes out in the open and it's been analysed, the techniques that are, uh, have been developed for that, once they become public, sometimes what happens is those techniques are now used for new malware and because they're used for new malware, you may not find out about them for quite some time in the same way that they are very stealth in terms of the way that the Red October malware was very, very stealth as well. So if somebody is targeting you, they use those techniques and that's what you need to look at. Are you likely to be a target for certain types of things? And I do mean certain types of things because there is that spear phishing that was talked about earlier on and you, you can get probed all the time because at our website we get probed all the time. Our website, I think uh, I'm right in saying that we usually get compromised and this is, we get broken into probably at about three, maximum four times a year. Yep. And we are a target. We, we, we know that we are a target. We're always looking out for it. So it's not necessarily the fact that, you know, you can assume you're not going to get attacked. You will get attacked. It's whether it's going to be successful. And if it's successful, what you're going to do about it. Equally in terms of, and we do look out all the time as to what we need to change and the types of attacks that are taking place, what we need to do. And again, it, when we look at these things in the news, what it's important to consider is how they're going to affect us. Former Tribune staffer denies giving hacker login credentials that's an insider threat you know where someone who's a trusted employee um, has allegedly provided details to someone outside where these details have been passed on and he's denying it uh, we can password hashing found in Cisco devices we talked about Cisco earlier on Cisco was mentioned in Christopher Smith's presentation as well in terms of embedded devices. This has happened, so this is weakening password hashing found in, in, in Cisco devices. Why would they weaken them over a period of time? It's beyond anyone's 
understanding, but it has happened, and it has been proven to happen. Um, Microsoft confirms compromise of high-profile Xbox Live accounts. High-profile meaning their own staff. Their own staff, who are key Microsoft staff, have had their Xbox accounts uh, broken into. New malware Trojan circulating uh, that targets Mac OS systems. Right, I said to you earlier on, I'd come back to Mac when we, I showed that slide of um, 57 Microsoft uh, vulnerabilities patched. Now, I put a lot of Mac slides in, so you'll excuse the imbalance here. The reason I put a lot of Mac in is because traditionally people have thought Windows was vulnerable. Traditionally, now in terms of mobile devices, if you go back the last year, everyone's thinking, everyone with an Apple is thinking Apple are okay, They're not, they don't get compromised, uh, and it's Android devices that do. Now, there are lots of, or several, um, Android vulnerabilities. I haven't put the slides in, I've only put the Mac ones in, just to remind Apple users here, yes, your devices do get attacked as well. They are vulnerabilities. Don't think that you're immune. It does actually happen. So this is the Mac OS. Um, so I think there's several slides of, of uh, Apple products here. Um, cyber attack on Florida election raises question. This slides in here, but this covers what uh, Christopher Smith was talking about earlier on about embedded devices. Th these, these, uh, these machines, the election machines that, that collect all the data and pass it out, the, the, the embedded device itself and the operating system was found to be compromised um, and it's found to be compromised. It was counting wrongly and it had been set and programmed to count wrongly. Um, casino. This, this is a very interesting one. This is sort of like the equivalent. Has anyone seen Ocean's Eleven? This is a bit like an Ocean's Eleven attack because the CCTV system was attacked and the CCTV system is so advanced it, 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 and, and the, the cameras are very, very good that they could scan and they could focus in on cards and apparently somebody's been accused of and he was thrown out of the hotel because they'd, he'd used the cameras to identify, in, I think it was four card games and netted 32 32 million in four card games where he could uh, supposedly see what the other people had in their cards because he arranged to see what they had through the cameras and he was getting signals from people in the room all over the place. Uh, again, technology, you know, when you're in an airport, you've got your mobile phone and you're trying to look, put in your password. Again, and again, these cameras are very, very sharp. They can pick up things like that. When you put your password in, again, airport or anywhere else with your laptops, it can be picked up. These are fairly good. The, the CCTV camera technology now is very, very advanced. Um, this guy here, um, spotting the steamy underweb and award-winning Fairfax cybercrime journalist Brian Krebs. Brian Krebs is a journalist, and basically he'd done a piece of work where, as a result of that piece of work, people did, a couple of people didn't like him. And what they'd done was, it wasn't a single attack, there was multiple attacks virtually all at the same time. And one of them was, as it's called here, swatting. It's sending in the SWAT team. They arranged to send the SWAT team into his house uh, as if he was being attacked. So when they arrived there, they thought he was being attacked and they wanted to break in and so on. They caused him lots and lots of inconvenience because he wrote some articles which certain people didn't like. Uh, AT&T hacker, uh, we've sentenced... Now, th this, this particular hacker, um, somebody looked at... The person looked at Apple and they looked at... Um, it's a vulnerability that they found and to prove it that they went about it in the wrong way uh, they are supposedly legitimate researchers that's what their past showed but because that they didn't do it correctly they've actually been accused of hacking and they're going to be sentenced to three and a half years in prison as a result of that two charges in theft uh, for 40 thousand uh, dollars from hacked subway keypads this is subway meaning subway the you know the um the restaurant chain Subway, someone there was selling um, these chip and pin devices and basically they'd been tampered with and he was giving them away or selling them to his uh, uh, other Subways etc and they'd been hacked so that he could skim off them. Again, that was an, another embedded device. So you, heard, you may have heard of embedded devices for the first time early this morning, but there's many, many devices around, as, as Christopher was alluding to earlier, and I've got several, as I said, uh, these. 
uh, examples in this. Uh, GSA database may have leaked contractor banking and proprietary information. Th 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 that, that was a major compromise um, which took place. Uh, it, it's, it's a story that's again wor well worth reading to look to see if there's any lessons you can learn from it that may apply to your organisations. Uh, um, it's, it's not one that would be a problem for most organisations, maybe if you're not big enough, but there, 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 is, there are some very interesting pointers there. Apple OS X 21 fixes, um, National Vulnerability Database. Earlier on today, uh, Christopher did show uh, the, the Vulnerability Database because he, he, he was looking at um, virtualization and some of the... Um, vulnerabilities within the virtualization environment when he pointed to I think about three or four of them and that database that he was referring to was hacked and this is in the last two weeks uh, 14th of March yep in the last two weeks um, Google to pay a laughable minuscule fine over Wi-Fi uh, this fine this story is the story uh, whereby Google when they were going around doing their street view what they did do was they collect lots and lots of other information, including uh, emails, uh, Wi-Fi networks, passwords, usernames, all that wonderful information. And they claim that they didn't do it intentionally, but uh, on inspection of the documents and speaking to people, it was proved that they did, and they actually most definitely did, um, in, in register's own way, as it says here, Google to pay laughable, laughably uh, minuscule fine. It is, it is very, very small fine. Uh, Google offers help. This is the good side of Google. Um, advice on hacked website uh, owners. Basically, if your website's been hacked, Google will have information. It does collect lots of information all the time, continuously. They will actually start using that to help website owners from now on. Um, HP printer. Um, there's a back door there, which, which needs to be fixed here. As I've highlighted a bit there. The shell is not accessible from the internet um, and should not cause much trouble for the end user. So do bear that in mind. When you read these stories, look for things like that, which will point to whether or not you could, should, or be worried, if at all or not. Um, right, this one here. Um, this is the SCADA patching under the microscope. Um, this was a bunch of, uh, a, a, well, sorry. This was a, 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 a report which looked at patching, and it says here most vendors still aren't uh, fixing the features within their products that were created uh, prior to networking environments. Uh, what they mean by that uh, is the authentication end. Now, if you remember this morning, David, uh, sorry, Paul, Paul covered in terms of identity authentication. There's lots there that, that you, you need to consider. Right, okay, backups, key thing there, small organizations are losing um, 9,000 in recovery costs every single time. Right, what else can I go through fairly quickly? Um, this one here. Right, document uh, list fell on cybersecurity web behind Canadian government uh, walls, uh, firewalls. It only took one click for a federal worker to allow malware into about 1,800 computers. One click. That's all it takes. Yep. Um, Anonymous decided they want to take uh, Israel off the map. Cybersecurity leads against the spy, uh, US spy agents. Right, I'm going to go through quickly. There's some actually interesting stories there, but I want to get to... Here we go. This is the fun bit. Right, context. Uh, earlier on, I think uh, Marie covered the fact that there, there's data breaches survey. Uh, that was done by PwC. Last year there's one every year, InfoSec, it's announced and it covers lots and lots of interesting things. I've been involved in that survey for a couple of years. Um, this year's one, we had our meeting last week to look at the results. There's lots of interesting results. I can't tell you anything now. It will be announced in April this year. Um, uh, last year, in 2012, there were tw 120 threat stroke risk reports of a reputable quality. Lots and lots of reports. We read them, we analyse them, we try and look at how, how they're going to get affected. So how does an SME get to grips with everything that's going on around them? Lots and lots of reports that I've showed you, uh, news reports. There are 
quality and Kaspersky I know do lots of them we, we look at them there's some really good quality stuff there so if you get the chance look at their reports now wasn't there so much going on how can you get to grips with that well what you need to do is focus your attention and in terms of focusing your attention one of the things that you can use is the ANISA report ANISA uh, is the European Network Information Security uh, agency uh, they've summarized taken all the 120 reports summarized lots of information from them um, and, and, and provided the top threat landscape overview of threat agents and the emerging threat landscape as well what they've done is they've nicely packaged it up for you so do please do go and take a look at the report I've got this here so that you get an idea of the sort of things in it but it gives you top threats emerging trends and these are emerging trends and top threats generally not as they apply to you what you probably need to do is look at this and start considering how it may well apply to you um, these are threat agents by the landscape um, that's also useful to look at sort of topics that you'd need to look at in terms of that may affect you perhaps vulnerabilities this is according to technology that you've got within your organizations mobile data leakages the sort of technology you do sort of cyber attacks perhaps that you're most likely to experience according to your risk management espionage uh, compliance and regulation there's a lot of things there now there are hell of a lot of things there and there are organizations that do try and help you again get some context into some of this and it's important to try and look at how these perhaps affect will affect your organization things that you can start to do is put together which I would say is important is an asset register we often find as consultants when we go in an organization doesn't have an asset register and what we talk about in terms of asset register we don't just mean the physical things and the software soft things we mean an asset register in terms of your intellectual property Property, yeah what do you have if you lost you cannot carry on doing business tomorrow um, aggressive threat modeling looking at if you were going to be attacked if somebody was going to attack you what would they try to attack and how would they try and get into your organization you need to have a risk register um, you need to consider some sort of defense in depth and I'm sure David's going to look at that in a bit more detail that's something that I know David has spoken about in the past you need to continuously be identifying major and minor projects according to the real world what I mean by that is sometimes your budget won't allow for you to have all the security you might feel that you want you've got to prioritize that's risk management you start looking at it. but what you do is you plan what you're going to do this year what you're going to do next year so you've got some major projects this year some minor projects and some major projects next year and some minor projects so you start working it out but you need to be able to shift those around according to what's happening in the real world determine how often you're going to collect new information and the way that you're going to assign some weight to it again because the reason it's, it's worded like that is because risk management is changing on a day-by-day -day basis almost in terms of what's going on out there this time last year cyber security wasn't something that was talked about in the press that often but if you look today it's a term that's used in the press quite often and since last year several governments around the world have introduced some sort of cyber security strategy they've introduced some money they've introduced lots of things that they are going to do to try and protect you so it is changing the world is changing um, and more and more we need to change and the way that we think about security the way that we protect our intellectual property and our assets needs to change as well because the threats are are very very different right that's me i think i'm done i hope i've scared you a lot okay Good. thank you very much, thank